All right, somebody asked me to uh, show how a Curta calculator is used. And um, while I think there's a lot of videos online that, that show that, I, maybe this is a better way to compare how you would do it on a, uh, a calculator that came before this one. Uh, these were the big fancy calculators that everybody would have. The only reason you would buy one of these is if you had to carry it someplace. Most people just did their calculations at their desk and they would get one of these that's much easier to use. Uh, but these little guys here, this Curta, um, would be somewhere you needed to go in the field. And that's why it was popular with um, only certain people. Because if you just needed to do a quick calculation, you would just use a slide rule. That was easily transportable everywhere, but you could get three or four digits of accuracy out of a slide rule. Well, this would give you many more digits. You know, this one would give you eight digits of, uh, eight digits of resolution. And one, two, three, four, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, so 11, 11 digit output. So yeah, so this is a very, very fine calculation. So surveyors needed very, very accurate and they were out in the field. So these were often used by surveyors and, and other people too, but yeah. So let's go through some calculations on this first. We'll do add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Okay. So we'll do the four functions on this one. And then I'll show you how that, that equates to this one. And you'll see that's basically the same thing. Just, just, just a tiny bit different. All right. So let's see if I can get everything in the camera here so you can see it nice. You may have never seen one of these before. I was kind of shocked when I first found one. All right. So uh, you input the numbers with these little things up here and you can see the number there. The accumulator is here. So your result is here. And then this over here we'll have to explain later, but it's basically it counts the number of things you do anyway. All right, so this is a bunch of, le bunch of levers. Um, there's a, a, a lever here, and that clears this and this together. There's a lever here that clears just this. There's a lever here that clears just this. Um, this is a lever to move, move the uh, carriage. You can move it this direction, or you can move it this direction. It just goes one stop. This is a lever where you can just freely move it anywhere you want. Um, this one has a fancy extra lever down here where you can move, uh, move the carriage. It's nice because this is the crank. You're going to be cranking this thing. That's the way it runs. So there's no motor in here. Um, and so you can do operations into the ones column into the tens column into the hundreds column. And so that's what this is. Um, this lever back here is for transportation. Uh, you put it into its place where you want to transport it. Um, probably you would want to move this carriage in, uh, to have it kind of compact. And then you would move this and move this. And now the thing is locked. Nothing, nothing moves. Okay. None of the functions happen until you hit this. And now it's freed again to do it, to do its thing. So that was the lock block feature back there. Okay. So complicated little beast. There's movable decimal points. So if maybe you were doing uh, money, you would put it with two decimal places. Maybe if you're doing engineering you put it with three decimal places. So those are slidable decimal places. All right. So let's clear the whole machine and let's do add. Okay. We want to add into the ones column. All right. We're going to be adding. So we're going to put in a number. Okay. We'll put in a uh, number 355. Okay. And we will turn the crank once and here the number appears. We want to put in a different number. Let's say one, one, three, and we crank the knob once and four, six, eight. So those two numbers added together is this. All right. So let's clear everything. Let's do subtraction. Uh, let's do three fifty five, and we will put that in. Okay. And then we will put in one, one, three. Now to subtract, you just crank backwards. All right. So, uh, 355, uh, minus one, one, three is two, four, two. Okay. So that's the way that works. All right. Clear it again. Uh, let's do multiplication. Okay. Let's put in, uh, 355. Okay. We want to multiply that by one, one, three. Okay. So one, one, three. So we're going to crank it three times. We've multiplied it by the three. 
Now we want to move the carriage over. Now we're going to add into the tens column, so we're going to do that once. Now we want to add into the hundreds column. We will add, do that once. So now uh, 355 times over here we can see it, 113 is 40115. So we've done a multiplication. We only had to crank it five times, three, four, five. So because we only had to crank it three times, then one time, then one time. That's the way multiplication works. All right, so division is a bit more complicated. <laughs> so yeah, let's get ready for that. Okay, let's clear this, let's clear this. Now multiplication, we're gonna kind of operate backwards, okay? So we're going to move our carriage all the way as far as it will go. Okay, so we're, we're here. We'll put in a 355. Okay, we will turn the crank and put in 355. So now we have 355. Now we want to divide that by 113. Okay, we're kind of going to do a reverse multiplication, kind of an upside down multiplication. So we're going to crank backwards. We're going to start subtracting. 133 from 335, okay, clear this. All right, so we're gonna go backwards. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, we got a ding, what was that? <laughs> That's like an old typewriter. It's actually a bell in this thing. That's the overflow condition. We had an overflow, you can see here it's 99999. That's an overflow condition. Whenever you hear the bell, put a positive crank back in, okay? You've gone too, when you hear the bell, you've gone too far, you gotta put one back in, all right? Okay, now that you've heard the bell, you won't be shocked by it. You can pay attention to what's going on. Okay, so let's start over. We are gonna divide uh, 355. Okay, so we're gonna put that in. So we're gonna do a positive crank for putting it in. We have 355, okay? Um, we are then gonna divide that by 113. Okay, we're gonna clear, clear this over here. All right, now we're gonna start uh, subtracting, okay? We get our ding, we put one back in, okay? We slide up, we slide over, okay. Now we do it again. Slide, put one back in. Oop. We get a ding, put one back in. Uh oh, put one back in. In fact, I uh, put two back in because I overflowed it too far. If you crank too far, it's okay. Just put two back in, okay? Oh, I put two, back, I put two back in. Okay, there we go. So anyway, uh, if you keep doing that, that's division, and we end up with the number over here, 3.1415, okay? And you can get three more decimal places. You just keep, keep, keep repeating, all right? So that's how that's how division works, all right? This is just uh, 355 divided by 133 is an approximation for pi. Um, so the interesting thing here is add, subtract, and multiply are pretty straightforward. Divide takes some getting used to. You have to remember if you hear the bell, you have to go back. If you miss it, you can go back twice, you know, that kind of thing, right? All right, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and do it with a curta. All right, so what does the curta look like? Well, it has numbers you input. It has little slidey things here, so that it has little numbers. So like three, five, five. Does that show up on camera? Yeah. So three, five, five, right? So that's that's the number that was uh, up at the top of the other one, okay? We have the accumulator. Well, this is the accumulator here, little numbers at the top, so this is the accumulator. Um, that's the one that was on the carriage that was on the right-hand side. And then we have that extra thing that's, that did the counting and stuff, and that's this one here in silver, okay? So we have the same thing. We have the uh, number we put in, we have the accumulator, and we have the, count, uh, the crank counting. We have a crank, cranks on the top. Uh, we only have one lever that clears everything, so we can spin this around. And uh, in order to spin it around, you have to lift lift on this thing, okay? What is this? Well, that's the carriage. If you want to move the carriage over, you lift and move it over one. Lift it over and move it over one. So this is the carriage. So uh, the reason this one got small was instead of being long, he just wrapped it around, but it's the exact same function, exact same function. We're just going to have a carriage that we can rotate back and forth and we have to lift up each time so it can stay in place. All right, so that's the carriage. Um, this is the clear. So when we, uh, we have some number in there, Let's, let's see, let's put in some number. 
So we have some uh, number in our uh, accumulator. Never crank these backwards. Uh, you'll destroy it. <laughs> and um, in order to clear just this, you can lift it up and only clear that part. Okay. If you want to clear everything, you can just spin it around. And that clears everything. So that's how you can clear either this side or this side, depending on where you spin it. Okay. Uh, there's one other little lever on the side here, and we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that later. Okay. So let's do a clear. Let's do an add. Okay. So we have to put everything back to zero. All right, we're gonna add three, five, five. Put that in the accumulator. Now three, five, five is here in the accumulator. All right. And we're gonna add one, one, three. And there we go, we get 468. Okay, so that's how you do addition. All right, so let's do a subtraction. Okay, we're going to clear the accumulator. We're going to put in a 355. Okay, we're going to put that in the accumulator. Now we have 355. Now we're going to subtract 113. And what did we, how did we subtract from the other one? We cranked backwards. Well, we can't crank backwards on this, but what we can do is we can lift it. So we lift this up and a little red line shows. And now when we crack, it's crank, it's actually subtracting. So this one, you always crank the same direction, and when you're pushed in, you're adding, and when you pull out, you're subtracting. And we get uh, an answer of 2, 4, 2. Okay, so let's do multiplication. All right, let's clear everybody. Okay, multiplication is pretty easy. We take uh, 3, 5, 5, and we want to multiply that by 1, 1, 3. So 1, 2, 3. Oops, sorry, what am I doing? Move it over, crank once, move it over, crank once, there we go. And we get 40115, and we've multiplied by 113. Okay, this is just counting the number of cranks, that's all this accumulator thing does here, okay? Now, before we do subtraction, we have to mention this switch on the side, okay? Oops, this one, this switch on the side. When it's in the up position, it's counting how many positive cranks. So when this thing is in, those are positive cranks. It counts the number of positive cranks. Okay. If we want to count the number of negative cranks, we flip this down and now it's going to be uh, doing negative cranks. Now this, this machine did it automatically. I kind of hid that. Here's a little thing here. Here's positive cranks. It has a plus. Here's negative cranks. It has a minus. Here's neutral position. Um, but this machine figures it out automatically and puts it puts it where it, where it needs to be depending on what you're doing. So you didn't see it happen, but this thing was was going back and forth whether I was multiplying or dividing. All right, um, or you can manually set it. Right. So so when we do division, we have to have it in the down position because we want to we want we're going to be subtracting things. Right. We're going to be putting in the 355 and subtracting off the 133, uh, the 113. And so we need it in the down position. Okay, so let's let's uh, divide. We need to move the carriage all the way over. Okay, we're going to clear. All right, we're going to put in three, five, five. All right. So now I have three, five, five up in the accumulator. And now I'm going to put one, three, one, one, three. Okay, I'm going to clear just the uh, lap counter. We're going to be counting negative cranks, okay? And we are going to be putting in negative cranks, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to turn it until we hear the bell bell ring, right? This doesn't have a bell. No bell. So you have to be watching this zeros. And nothing is happening. Oh, now it's all 99999, nine, nine, which meant we overflowed. So we have to push it down and put one more in, okay? And then we can move over. We can crank again. Oh, we're going to overflow. Put one back in. Move it over. Oh, we got an overflow. Put one back in. Oh, got an overflow. Put one back in. Move it over. Oh. 
oops, overflow, one back in, go over, overflow, one back in. Okay, so where are we? We're at 3.14159 which is exactly exactly right for this this uh, division. So we have divided, we've added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided on the curta. Uh, the only weird thing is you have to worry about this, and you have to worry that there's no bell, so you have to look for the overflows yourself. Uh, otherwise, it's exactly the same as every other calculator that people were used to. Um, so it wasn't a big learning curve on, on using one of these. Um, it also has the little movable decimal places if you're doing... Uh, dollars and cents, or you're doing some type of engineering work stuff. Anyway, there you go. Um, I might do a separate video on how you take a square root um, using a Taylor expansion, but uh, for now, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, curta versus the uh, desktop unit. This is, happens to be a Schubert.